Welcome, and thanks for joining with AIP, the American Institute of Pyramid Research. We study pyramids around the world, especially in Egypt, with the belief they hold special wisdom. Please subscribe to our channel as we uncover long hidden secrets, explain sacred symbols, and demystify the world's greatest mysteries. Okay, so before Alpha and Omega is inside the Great Pyramid, here they are. So I called the, these two inside and outside. Actually, three of them are inside, but you know, the inside derived one at the top there, and then the one on the outside on the east face. So you've got inside and outside in terms of thinking of these Alpha and Omegas. But another way to think about them is beginning and ending, because the one that's in the entrance passage, as I said, the first part of the descending passage is called the entrance passage. The first part is there. As soon as you, you, know, you get in, you, you, you know, you'd, you'd see that one. It's not too far, far down the, uh, the descending passage there. And then when you finally get up to what everyone recognizes, the summit of the journey, you've made it to the king's chamber, the place where the, you know, the empty coffer is, you find the Alpha and Omega that Robert Grant found. I put uh, here that it was October 6th, but he told me later he was in the pyramid on October 6th because I was in the pyramid October 6th, 2018. He was in the pyramid October 6th, 2017. And I thought that was an, an unusual coincidence, but he didn't find it on that day. He found it in 2017, but on a different date. So anyway, beginning and ending, okay? So uh, looking at these now, the, the first Alpha and Omega, you'd see, you could see from a distance, it would attract you, you know, just like the, a pyramid tracks, the Great Pyramid tracks so many people from around the world because it's, you know, it was the largest structure, the tallest structure on earth for almost 4,000 years. So people have been attracted to it. They're attracted to it. So you see the Alpha and Omega on the outside. You go, ooh, I wonder what else is going on there. So that leads you, of course, to go uh, into the Great Pyramid. And then you find one on the inside there. So now you're thinking, wow, this is really interesting. These are leading me. And so there's the descending passage. You can see the scored line right there. And then there's two unique uh, joints that, that precede it, which we were measuring those also when we were in there. Okay, so there it is. Okay, so that's the second alpha and omega. Then the third one is derived by looking at this cross section of the Great Pyramid, but there is an alpha and omega there. And then the fourth one, there's the carved alpha and omega on the diorite, you know, sarcophagus that's, that's in the king's chamber there. Wow. Incredible. Okay, so um, the alpha and the omega. Three times in the book of Revelation, and four, depending on which translation you use, Alpha and Omega is referenced, okay? So the first one, Revelation 1.8, I'm Alpha and Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. So very powerful words going along with this Alpha and Omega. Now this one I put in red because this one only appears in the King James. If you're reading a different translation of the New Testament, you won't see this one. So, you know, there's three... Alpha and Omegas in the Bible, oh, there's four. Just like with our Alpha and Omegas inside the Great Pyramid. If you don't count the derived one, there's three. Oh, there's four. Interesting connection. So, you know, there's the four uh, we've gone through in, in this uh, video so far, the four appearances of the Alpha and Omega in the Great Pyramid. But again, if you don't allow the one I'm deriving, which isn't a physical one, there are three physical Alpha and Omegas. So interesting, three or four usages of Alpha and Omega in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, uh, verse 20, uh, chapter 21, verse 6, Then he said to me, It is done. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give to the one who thirsts from the spring of the water of life without cost. And, and I love this reference because I've studied the Great Pyramid so intensely because I think it has meaning. I think that there's things to be found there. I thirst for it. And that's what this associated with this idea of Alpha and Omega, you know, wanting to understand these things. What's here for me? And then in the last chapter of the Bible, the final reference, the fourth or the third, depending, I'm the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Wow. Okay. So I got to thinking, this Alpha and Omega is, is the Alpha and Omega are together, but the Alpha is bigger. Okay. This Alpha and Omega, the Alpha and the Omega are basically the same size. They're at the same height, but they're together. And the third one, 
again, uh, they're, they're together, the alpha and omega together, but in this case, while the A is bigger, the omega doesn't outsize it like the first one. But all three of these, the alpha and the omega are together. They're one. Finally, when you get up to the coffer in the king's chamber, you have a separate alpha and omega. And I couldn't help but think, because I, I took you on this idea that there's this development of the alpha and the omega, and this is the culmination that somehow there's some kind of mature understanding of God to be able to differentiate. It's the alpha and the omega are separate. You know, they were treated uh, together in the first three, but this final one for the mature, there's this differentiation of the understanding of God. And of course, I, I hope we would think that as, as we mature and grow in spiritual in spirituality in these things, we would have a deeper understanding of the powers that be. Okay? The Alpha and the Omega. Okay, final thoughts here. This is mysterious. You know, are those Alpha and Omegas, were they carved in later, you know, Robert Grant thinks that that the one on the coffer was part of the original, you know, the original builders put that there. And while you might scoff at that idea, thinking, well, somebody carved that in there, if you look at some of my other videos and markings that plainly were left by the builders on the Giza Plateau that plainly point out meanings and things, they're not like, you know, some perfectly polished diamond that without question, they're, they're, I won't say they're rough marks, but you know, it, it's possible based on other signals that the builders have left on the Giza Plateau that the Alpha and the Omega was originally part of the Great Pyramid. So it's a mystery, because maybe it wasn't, we can't prove it. And, and the same thing with the other ones. The one in, it's so interesting that there's one right next to the, the uh, scored lines, which is such a peculiar and singular part of the Great Pyramid. So the final, final thought is, you know, the Great Pyramid, many think, is the Pillar of Enoch. These ancient legends, you know, both in uh, Arabic legend and, and uh, Muslim legend, uh, ancient, you know, Hebrew oral tradition, that Enoch was going to want to put two stone pillars that would encase the wisdom of the world and also help warn of future catastrophes. So if the Great Pyramid is that, and, and I think it is, then there, as we've done other videos about the, uh, uh, the, the pole shift that could happen and the catastrophes that could come, Omega is a perfect symbol to go along with the idea of a final warning because it's the last letter of the Greek alphabet. And of course, as a symbol, you know, I talk about this in my book, Enoch, it predates, you know, Greek, the Greek language and Greek culture. So there's this ancient symbol of Omega and it goes along with, uh, you know, the constellation Orion, where it's so revered by so many people, because there is an idea of Omega. Here's, a, here's this Orion raising his club and coming with judgment. So the idea of the Omega. So that makes the Alpha and Omega have potential meaning in relationship to the Pillar of Enoch. Hey, so I'd like a little feedback uh, from my YouTube audience. Thanks for watching, by the way. You know, I'm a pretty new channel, been, been going about a year. And so uh, the video that I made today is about 15 minutes long, and it seems to me that's a little bit too long. So I, I broke it up like I did my last video into two, you know, eight or nine minute videos. I just thought that that was better. But I guess I'd actually like your feedback on that. So if, uh, if you're watching and you hear my, my query here, if you wouldn't mind but uh, uh, weighing in in the comments down below, let me know if uh, you prefer like two eight or nine minute videos or one 50 minute video. Okay, well listen, I hope you can come on this Orion Correlation Tour that I'm doing uh, April 19th through the 25th. You know, the, look in the description below and you'll see uh, some of the particulars, but it's going to be a lot of fun uh, and it's going to be very educational. It's going to be an intimate group with a spiritual direction. So come join us on the Orion Correlation Theory Tour. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, comment below.